So welcome back, everybody. This is our first uh, session for contributed orals. And this is going to be about implementation of variational quantum algorithms, such as the ones that Alba has explained before. So the first speaker is Pablo Diez Valle from the Institute of Fundamental Physics. And he's going to talk about multi-objective variational quantum optimization for constraint problems. Hey, okay, thank you very much, Paula. Well, as Paula said, I'm Pablo Diez Valle. I am PhD candidate in the Institute of Fundamental Physics. And well, first I would like to thank the organizers because well, I think that it will be a great event. And now I'm going to talk to you a bit about how we try to improve the performance of variational quantum optimization for constraint problems, um, applying a multi-objective approach. Okay, you can check the details in this preprint. And well, it will be soon also in the journal Quantum Science and Technology. And well, we know that quantum computing holds the promise of a major impact in science and industry, okay? and in specific classical problems in machine learnings and combinatorial optimization have been envisioned as possible targets. In this context, variational quantum algorithms are one of the current leading strategies. However, realistic uh, scenarios, in realistic scenarios, these problems usually involve several constraints which are too difficult to be efficiently mapped into the quantum processor. Okay? This is actually a critical issue, but few studies have died into possible alternatives. That's why in this work, we explore a method to improve the performance of rational quantum algorithms in these scenarios. So well, I'm going to be very brief in this part because I've already made a great introduction. We know that rational quantum algorithms have this common scheme, we have an ANSAT, a parameterized quantum circuit, we have a cost function that defines our problem, and we have a training method to update these variational parameters. Uh, there are many applications that have been thought for these variational quantum algorithms due to some strengths. For example, they are suitable for new devices, they are very versatile. However, however there are also many challenges especially regarding the turnability of these variational quantum algorithms. For example, we have the system of many local minima, the barren plateau phenomenon. We have the effect of, of half warp noise. And in this work, we focus on the later challenge, that is that we have to be aware of the turnability of these algorithms in, con in context where, uh, in which we have a lot of constraints, OK? That these contexts are the realistic scenarios. This is what we understand by constraint combinatorial optimization. We have a black box objective function that we want to minimize. Uh, this function have a discrete set of possible solutions. That's why we can encode every solution in terms of spin variables or binary variables. Okay. But we are not just interested in minimizing this function. We also need that the solution satisfies some inequalities and equality constraints. Okay? So in other words, we are not interested in exploring the whole space of possible solutions, which exponentially increases. We are just interested in a small region but that we call feasible subspace, in which all solutions satisfy the given constraints. Okay? And in this small subspace, we have the best global solution that we would like to reach. And if we were not able to read this solution, at least we would like to find a good approximation around this global solution inside this feasible subspace. Well, and regarding marginal algorithms, we can solve these problems mapping the objective function to a Hamiltonian. We do this mapping the binary variables to, uh, to Pauli set operators. And we have to, to take into account that we have no access to the whole variational wave function, okay? But we have access to the samples that we obtain measuring this variational wave function. And these samples are just classical states. They are strings of zeros, or ones, of zeros or ones. So at the end of the day, what we want in variational quantum optimization is approximate a variational wave function that is able to sample states, solutions with low cost, and that satisfy the given constraints. 
so at this point, the key question arises, okay? How do we integrate these constraints in our algorithms? How do we improve the overlap of the rational refraction to the with the, with, with the feasible subspace? The most desirable technique would be uh, to directly map the constraints into the quantum circuit, okay? So that we have quantum circuits that are capable of natively preserve the constraints. This can be done, for example, with constraint algorithms, for example, the quantum alternate operator ANSAT, but as I said before, the constraints are usually very difficult to be efficiently mapped into the quantum circuit. In these cases, the state of the art strategies, a strategy is to add, to transform the objective function including penalty hyperparameters or extra slack, or extra slack variables, okay? so that the value of this new objective function is much higher when a specific solution does not satisfy any of the given constraints. This is very easy to implement, but it also has several shortcomings. For example, the computational over overhead produced by the tuning that we have to do to these penalty hyperparameters. In this context, we proposed a method that we call MOFCO, Multi-Objective Variational Constraint Optimizer. Okay? This is a method that combines the quantum variational framework with a multi-objective genetic optimization. Okay? So, well, we make use of a methodistic classical technique that is known as non-dominated sorting genetic algorithm. The goal of this algorithm is to find uh, the set of optimal solutions of multiple cost functions. Okay. For example, in this case, we have two functions, and the set of optimal solutions is called Pareto front. To find this front, this algorithm employs an evolutionary procedure okay, in, in which the set of solutions that we call population evolves through the application of biologically inspired operators, okay, such as mutation or reproduction. In this kind of algorithms, the set of solutions are, is called population, every solution is called individual, and the iterations are called generations. Okay. So in MOFCO, the individuals will be set of variational parameters, so that the parameters of the variational algorithms are updated through the simultaneous optimization, optimization of these two fitness functions. One fitness function the left in the left will address the quality of the solution in terms of the constraint satisfaction. Okay. We do this doing the average of the percentage of constraints satisfied by every sample solution. Okay, taking into account that we are measuring k times the variational refraction, okay, the quantum circuit. Regarding the energy optimization, we have this fitness function in which instead of optimizing the, the standard average energy, we use this kind of restri restricted energy in which to avoid time optimizing states that are out of the feasible to space, we just take into account in the calculation the states that are inside the feasible to space, okay? So the state that satisfy all constraints. This is the general scheme of the algorithm. We have an ANSAT, okay, in the left, running in the quantum computer, okay, like in every variational quantum algorithms. So let's say that we start with a random set of parameters, okay, with random sets of parameters. We sample the ANSAT with these sets of parameters, and we can calculate the two previous functions that are E and P with these parameters. We can rank, classify, the sets of variational parameters in terms of fronts, okay? How, how do we do it? Well, uh, there you have the plane of the functions, E and P, and every dot means one set of variational parameters, okay? So we can start calculating the part of front of this whole set of solutions is the blue one, so the sets of variational parameters belonging to this part of front will be in the first front, now we remove the set of variational parameters from the whole set of solutions, and we calculate a new Pareto front, that the orange one. This will be the second front. We repeat the process, remove this set of variational parameters from the whole set, and we calculate, and we calculate the third front, and so on, 
until we had all the sets of additional parameters ranked by fronts. Now we can keep the sets of additional parameters belonging to the first fronts, and these sets are promoted to the next to the next iteration or the next generation. Okay? And furthermore, these best sets of variational parameters are used to create new sets of variational parameters through the application of genetic operators okay, in the right. Now in the next iteration, we will we'll run the ANSAT just using the new sets of variational parameters. Okay? And we will repeat the process again and again, obtaining in every step better sets of variational parameters. Okay, uh, well, I think that now I'm going to show you some numerical experiments, okay, that we performed. Uh, to test uh, the robustness of the method, we used a logistic uh, optimization problem, okay, with great relevance in finance, that is called cash handling. Okay. This problem consists in uh, delivering cash from a vault to a network of ATMs, automatic teller machines, okay, so that we reduce the cost of this delivery, but at the same time we keep the, avail the available cash in every ATM in between a specific range. Okay. Well, I have no time to explain you the details uh, of the problem, but this problem can be mapped to a Hamiltonian, and the realistic version has got a lot of inequality constraints. And here you can see you can see some numerical results. Regarding the performance of the method for the energy with the approximation ratio, here we are just using a problem, a problem agnostic ANSAT, okay, BQE type, and we, got, we are also looking at the constraint satisfaction. Note, for example, that that p equal to one means that after a number of generations, the variational wave function is sampling only states that are inside the feasible sewer space. That is what we wanted, okay? And we also compared the, um, the method, MOFCO, with the standard, the state of the art approach, that is the standard approach, that is the penalties technique. And well, we see that we obtained better results regarding the energy, regarding the dispersion of the results, and especially regarding the success in sampling only states that are inside the feasible sewer space. Okay. And, well, Paula is looking at me. So <laughs> we also did Bernard with larger systems using product states. And, well, again, we obtained better results, both regarding the energy and regarding the constraint satisfaction. And, well, that's all. Let me just acknowledge to the, acknowledge to the team. This is a collaboration between the Queen Fog Group in the Institute of Fundamental Physics at the Bank BBBVA team, and this collaboration is part of the is part of the Cuco project. That is a collaboration between companies and public institutions to do research about quantum computing in Spain. And well, that's all. Thank you very much. This is the conclusion. <laughs> okay. uh, thank you, Pablo. And uh, now, if you have any questions. Thank you for the interesting talk. I would like to know more about the optimization or the fine tuning of the genetic algorithm because I suppose that uh, the genetic algorithm has some mutation ratio and things like that. You do like a meta optimization, you optimize the genetic algorithm in one side, then ex execute to the variational algorithm or uh, combine it both at the same time. Yes, to do, the, to do the numeric is right. The the genetic algorithm has can have a lot of meta optimization. Now there are a lot of hyperparameters. In this case, to for the numerical experiments, we didn't tune the genetic algorithm a lot, just a bit, because we obtained good results just with the hyperparameters that we had. But actually, this result could be improved a lot using for example, some kind of meta optimization, as you said. So we didn't do 
a lot of optimization in that sense because we already got, got good results. So it could be much more optimized. Are there any other questions? Okay, so I think we can thank Pablo again for this amazing talk. <laughs>